today with my friend um, Liz Skelton, who goes by Fat Liz Art. Fat Lizard Art. Fat Lizard Art. Um, at P H A T. T. Yes. Right, Lizard Art. In here in Waterloo, and it's really great to be here with you, my friend. We um, we've uh, we were very very much uh, together in the early phases of your development, just when you were first starting to paint. Right. But you've certainly come a long way since then, Liz. And um, so, first of all, tell me a little bit about your your background. I know that you started art fairly late in life, right? Yes. Um, um, traditional art, I stayed, started late in life, but um, for many years I was a potter. So ah. I was uh, decorating ceramic ware and making my own cups and plates and pots and that in Cape Town um, and that was a full-time job for me for, for about 15 years and then maybe about um, 20 years ago after coming to Canada I started dabbling in acrylics mm -hmm. um, and um, was working full-time but painting part-time and um, about must be about two and a half years ago I became a full-time artist Wonderful, and I don't think you've ever looked back since. No, this is, um, I think one of my bios or artist statements says sometimes I could gently pinch myself. But it's a, <laughs> it is like a dream come true. <laughs> well, you know what, your attitude is just phenomenal. And as I followed you, and for those folks that want to follow Liz on Instagram, um, pl please feel free to do so because she always publishes some really fabulous things and it's always really eye-catching. Um, but really the purpose of what I wanted to talk to you about today was that um, some artists are struggling with uh, just trying to sell purely visual art and it's a challenge right now mm -hmm. in view of the economic situation but for you Liz you've managed to uh, branch out pretty successfully into lots of other things so can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what you've been doing since you've been doing just purely visual art? Um, so um, it kind of started um, with, um, I was looking to take my canvas art and make patterns out of my canvas art. Um, so uh, that led me to take a Photoshop course. Um, it was a fairly intense Photoshop course. And, um, and then I just got to realize I actually love painting digitally and illustrating digitally as well um, so I'm still painting on canvas but my really my, my heart is is now more towards the digital side of um, artwork mm -hmm. um, and um, yes so I'm digitally drawing and um, turning those into patterns and illustrating and it, it's kind of a niche that I'm just starting to explore but uh, loving every minute of it so for example let's let's talk about some of these amazing things so these are wallpaper samples right. correct yes um, and just hold them up maybe so people can see the absolute incredible detail and coloring in this right so this is this is phenomenal so there are other ways and in income streams for people to consider uh, and I know many people are interested in considering other ways of doing things other than uh, visual. But just tell me a little bit about how this process worked, how you got started thinking about this. I know it was digital, but why florals, why nature, why, you know, why you've done and, and captured what you, you have? Because these are, these are spectacular. <laughs> um, I, I think for me, uh, just uh, painting Floral, florals and fauna and that um, it's just sort of a natural progression for me I'm an avid gardener so uh, everything to do with spring and gardening and flowers and insects and bugs just um, really you know is, is sort of part of my persona um, so I think for me you know these it's a little bit like you paint all day long, but what do you do with the canvases at the end of the day? Or, you know, when I was a potter, it, I didn't plan to become a full-time potter, but I just fell in love with pottery. And, you know, by the time I'd fired my 10th kiln and had 50 pieces of pottery, I'm like, well, what do I do with this? You know, these, you know, your home is only so big and there's only so many people who want gifts of pottery. Um, so it kind of through osmosis forces you to 
look at a market. So that's how I came to be a full-time potter. Um, and the same thing here, I, I started learning digital art and illustrating in Photoshop, but um, you know, and, and I just felt because I loved it so much, I, you know, I felt that sort of each month that passed, I was getting better at it. You know, mm -hmm. I, could, I could feel I was improving. And, um, and then I started looking at ways of what I could do with my digital art. And, um, you know, for me, it's, um, I've just started getting involved in drop shipping and doing greeting cards. Yes, um, these are phenomenal too. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, drip, uh, drop shipping. And right. I'm still playing with beautiful a uh, couple of companies and testing the waters with um, drop shipping and got a couple of uh, pokers in the fire with that. And then um, as well, um, I'm, I'm hoping one day to be licensed by somebody. I'm hoping you do too, and I can't imagine why you won't be. Um, you know, sometimes I think with licensing, there's a lot of um, sort of things that are popular at the time. And, um, you know, and, and, and I'm almost sort of at that point in my life where I, I want to draw and paint what really talks to me versus trying to do what's popular. Well, good for you. Um, um, anyway, and then the other the other outlet for digital art is, of course, um, you know, wallpaper and um, fabrics. Fabrics, so, yes. Um, this is all through um, Spoonflower. Okay. Um, and there's plenty of different um, outlets um, for artists. And, of course, the wallpaper you've seen, and that's also through Spoonflower. Wonderful. So this is kind of a drop shipping. Is Spoonflower an American company? Or yes, it's uh, an American. American. Okay. Um, so, uh, and then these are just pieces of samples which you have to order before you can make your... Oh, they're, um, they're squares? Are they for quilting? Yes, or? Um, yes. So, so these are just samples that I've placed um, with Spoonflower in order to be able to sell. You have to order a sample which costs money. Right. Um, and then you look at your design, you make sure it looks great, and then you can publish it for sale. Um, so this is probably the cheapest way of ordering samples is through a yard right. with multiple patterns. Right. Um, right. The other way is just you know ordering individual patterns. But I had a lot of patterns I wanted to publish for sale, so I went through this particular style of sampling. Mm -hmm. um, and this one's probably going to go into one of my granddaughter's sewing boxes. Oh, for, lovely! For Christmas, she's learning to sew, so I just thought, just lovely. Um, so Liz, for, for people that are looking for sort of alternate ways of, of doing their work and making a, a living at it, th this strikes me as being something that would be very um, popular for, for artists to think about. Um, when you say you're not licensed yet, so what does that procedure look like? What, what has to happen? Um, it's basically been noticed by an agent who I suppose it would be a little bit like if you said, um, you know, maybe some a gallery would notice your art on Instagram and reach out and say we'd love okay, to okay, have some of your pieces okay, in our gallery. Okay. Um, with an agent, um, they would um, potentially, you know, if they saw some work they liked, and they could either, um, you know, just put you on their books mm -hmm. to say when something comes up that we think your style of work would suit, um, you know, then you could potentially be licensed to put your work, say, for instance, um, you know, this could be like wrapping paper, you know, um, wow. and then, you, you know, wow. the, 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 wow. the company, who, the agent who they work for could then license your work and, um, wow. you know, and, and you, you'd that. get commission from licensing. From this, I don't know whether the viewers can see, but there's a really tiny, beautiful little praying mantis or grasshopper. Uh, that one's a there. grasshopper. And yeah. I think there is a praying on that one as well, oh. praying mantis. <laughs> it, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. um, so you're based in Waterloo, Liz, and uh, I think Waterloo has been fairly good to you. Mm -hmm. um, can you share a little bit about your visual art and I think um, had opportunities at City Hall? Um, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that experience and what's going on in the community for you. Um, well, I, I find um, I have an Etsy shop and um, uh, shipping has just gone, I, I don't know if, if across the world everybody's finding this, but definitely um, as a Canadian artist and shipping across the border and even across Canada, um, the shipping costs are astronomical. Are. So, you know, um, it's really hard to keep your prices down as an artist selling original art um, and um, ship it, you know, um, I've spent upwards of three, four hundred dollars to ship a larger piece 
um, you know, to either the, the um, west coast of Canada or across to the States. Um, so locally, I find um, there's definitely opportunities. There's a lot of grants given by municipalities. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. um, I was just recently at the city of Kitchener in the Rotunda. It's a circular wall. Um, and um, they so were the city hall. Their uh, city hall. Yes, uh, yes. Kitchener City Hall, mm -hmm. and um, they would um, th th they also pay you to actually show there, which is great. Oh, um, wonderful. Um, the cities all have sort of art walks and that, so um, I've been very lucky to have somebody select a piece of my art, which is on the back of one of the buildings. Um, great. And it's uh, I think it's it's been up for about two years, and and who knows how long it's going to be up there for. But these are all opportunities that I think local artists or you know folk living in a community can reach out to their, you know. Um, so it's not just about gallery representation. There are other opportunities like, you know, the library. I think you had a show at the public library. Correct. Yes. You you currently have some work in a, a um, sort of a repertoire cinema, mm -hmm. um, where now you've been well known there. You've shown there before, so now people are familiar with your work. Mm -hmm. um, what 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 has been sort of the what, what's your background um, besides being a potter? Were you in business? Did you have a business sense? Did you do some feasibility and marketing studies? Or did you just leave that world behind and simply create and see what was going to happen? Um, well, when I worked for, in the corporate world, I was a um, project manager in the IT um, world. So technology is pretty, I'm pretty comfortable with technology. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, we had managed budgets and things like that. So I'm sort of pretty familiar with finances. Um, but I think for me, it, it's, um, I feel sometimes I have too many little pokers in the fire, mm. but I, I kind of feel that if I don't try different things, I'm never going to know. Um, so, so no, it, it's purely just going with, with what talks to my heart and then my head kicks in and says, okay, this is doing well, or that's not doing so well. And, you know, try this avenue and, um, um, and, and on Instagram, one of the things I absolutely love doing is um, challenges. So, you know, for yes, me, yes. the challenges that everybody puts out and, you know, it takes time for these uh, folk who host these challenges. So thank you. That's uh, it's always an opportunity for us illustrators and artists. Um, but they're great for just getting your work out there, inspiring you with new designs and, you know, um, and who knows, you know, somebody just needs to notice your work or see a piece that you've got. From this may be the opportunity, Liz, <laughs> who knows, right? Who knows? Um, your, early, your early days, like growing up in South Africa, are you, are you from Joburg? Um, my last 20 years or so was Cape Town, but in I had lived in Joburg, yes. Okay. And so how, how um, you, you, as a child, you obviously were have an artistic soul and artistic spirit. Um, did you have role models in your family, your mother, your father, somebody in your background that, you know, sort of always um, encouraged you to, to do something in the arts? Um, I think so. Um, I come from a large family, so six kids. Um, my older brother, Mike, is just retired. He's an architect, so he's always been able to draw. Um, uh, um, my younger sister, I think, went to art school. And my mom and dad have always been creative, like even in their retirement days, they did pottery classes together and, um, you know, learned how to upholster, all avid gardeners. Mm. And um, yes, I was given lots of art books and drawing books as a child and, um, you know, I still have a book. In fact, I've just given it to my son who loves to draw, um, a little, a book on fairies and gnomes and, um, yes, so, so definitely a family of, you know, folk who, like to create usually there usually it comes from you know that genetic um artsy seed somewhere yes right? yeah. in, in a family, especially in a large family like yours um future liz let's talk about your future plans and what you're what you're thinking about in terms of any marketing strategies that you're thinking about um besides getting licensed with all this what's your dream in taking this forward um, uh, it's it's not to give up canvas art. I do right. still have that really an urge and a desire to paint. Um, but the, my current strategy is um, I'm still doing courses. So I've just um, I've signed up for a um, 
writing a children's book. Mm. So um, I have... Um, writing the book or illustrating the book? Both. Both. Ah. Um, my dad uh, was an avid storyteller and um, and um, us six kids would sort of hang around the bed and when he got home from work and uh, we'd all lie in the bed and he would tell us stories and they were always about uh, uh, African animal characters. Ah. Uh, a main one called Casper Kahiti, which is a meerkat in Zulu. And he would tell us these stories and um, we told our children when they were young. And um, I've got so many notes written to write books. So I, every time I illustrate, I'm kind of thinking the back of my head about the book. Mm -hmm. I'm you know, building up little characters that can fit into the story. Um, so that's the one thing uh, the, I've signed up for the course. Um, I just need to make time to do it. Um, I'm also starting uh, next month a digital design course. Oh, just to be able to take my patterns to a new level. Yep. Um, and then I think every time I need to generate income to help pay for everything else, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it costs money to order samples and pay for things. Sure. Um, sure. Is um, I, I, I'm still an avid painter. Like I, 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 I'm a prolific painter. Yeah, sure. Um, and um, and then I, I'll have an art sale. And that will generate income to get me on my path. So I've kind of got like a five-year vision of something will happen one day. Uh, I've, had, I've been in a number of jewelry shows. Um, I've had one in Toronto and in uh, Woodstock. Oh, great. Uh, Cambridge, uh, had, I've been accepted a few times into the... Wonderful. For the, for the Cambridge um, Arts. Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you very much, Liz. <laughs> for sharing. I was most uh, interested in spending some time with Liz today and uh, coming over and seeing what's up. So again, your website, your, your website is? Um, Fat Lizard Art, and that's P-H-A-T. L-I-Z-A-R-D-A-R-T. Uh, and double Z. Oh, double <laughs> Z, okay. <laughs> Just to be different. <laughs> okay, okay, and your Instagram account? Is also Fat Lizard Art. Okay. So I hope you can check it out and uh, see, see what Liz is up to. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Joanne. You're welcome.